Hello everyone, welcome to the Breaking Uneven podcast. We love to talk shop, uncover the beauty of failures and play a few games. Today we have with us the co-founder and CEO of Prop Returns, Kenneth Shah. He studied civil engineering at the Birla Institute of Technology and Science Pilani, Dubai. He has previously worked as a real estate analyst at Emirates NBD REIT and was then the head of investment at Reflex Realty LLP before starting Prop Returns. Have we missed, I'm sure we've missed some stuff from your journey, but anything noteworthy from your journey so far? Uh, I mean, nothing as such, just uh, had like, just had helped a couple of people in my uh like college to run a couple of startups so a lot of entrepreneurial experience have never really worked i mean at emirates nbd also i was just there for like a couple of months so that (laughs) that was like my first uh stint uh at working but yeah i mean always been entrepreneurial so nothing much you missed out on but yeah i mean it covers the summary (laughs) cool so then let's if, if we've got the summary let's get into prop returns a bit um yeah so we'll play a quick little game to get a little more of an understanding on prop returns. Sure. Perfect. So we played the Twitter pitch challenge. Twitter is known for its 280 character limit on every tweet, which makes it a little difficult to convey your thoughts. It takes around 20 seconds to speak 280 characters, and we want to transfer this challenge to you to explain to us prop returns in 20 seconds. But we won't make it easy. You also need to use one emoji and one hashtag in your tweet. Any questions? No, I, I, I got the gist of it. So, uh, Perfect. Wait, yeah. wait, wait. So let me start the stopwatch and then you can start. Three, two, one, go. Uh, hashtag India's largest real estate investment marketplace. Home emoji, fire emoji. Uh, and uh, uh, building India's largest real estate investment ecosystem. If that comes in the entire summit. Yeah, that was- <laughs> Perfect. That was under 20 seconds. It was under, like, yeah, just about 15 seconds. So great. I think yeah. you're one of the, like, the shortest to the point uh, bar that we've gotten so far Yeah. Uh, in terms of description. But that's amazing. Um, but before, like, we get deeper into prop returns, let's start with you and where you began. And then we can delve deeper into what you mentioned about prop returns. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean... Uh just early days of prop returns. So we started prop returns in like COVID uh, when I, I was studying in like bits, uh, studying civil engineering, graduated. I mean, I didn't even graduate actually. So I I left before my graduation for Bombay because like the wave, etc. Uh, I mean, I did technically graduate. I got my degree, etc. But I was not in Dubai when I graduated. Uh, so yeah, I mean, when... COVID hit like 2020-ish, March, I came back to Bombay, uh, had no option, everyone was leaving Dubai. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, just realized that there was like a huge gap in real estate investments. Market, especially in India, the market's not very transparent, like especially the real estate sector, data's hidden all the time. Like it's so, it's so difficult to make a decision. Uh, to invest in real estate because most Indian investors purchase real estate based on gut, uh, right? Just trust. Like tomorrow, if my friend tells me, I'll invest in the same property as him, but you have no data underlying that investment. So uh, just realized that there was a lot of gap in the sector and how I realized that is because I was myself part of the sector. So as soon as I came back from uh, Dubai, uh, I started working as a broker. So just doing like my own uh, transactions, uh, working with like high net worth individuals who want to invest in real estate, uh, like almost built up a good base of almost like 3000 investors myself uh, for almost around, you can say around six months. So six months I was just doing my own transactions, running my own deals. Uh, you can say I was the youngest real estate broker that time. I was like 23, mm-hmm. I think at yeah, 22. 22 i think so yeah uh, but yeah it was fun um, and learned a lot in this journey um, short journey but learned a lot my family's also into real estate since like 45 years so obviously 
every dinner table we talk about real estate so i mean just you realize the problems when you're young so when i was like 15 i realized that the market is not very transparent over time it just got built up that you know uh, investing in commercial real estate is becoming more difficult uh, and there is no single online platform or an aggregator where you can discover assets across india across bombay across delhi different cities uh decide how much you're looking to invest where you're looking to invest etc so that's how i mean just while i was doing my own transactions realized the big gap and i uh, got with my two co-founders who are my best friends since like 6 7 years today uh so we've also started previous like couple of startups together they've also had startups with exits before so all of us are like fresh grads uh none of us have experience in real estate i would say like we're all started from scratch but uh, yeah we have a good foundation families also there in business so um i mean just realized a big gap and start building property towns so the initial journey was just offline so uh me my co-founders used to like make 70 80 calls a day just tele calling calling like uh, cold calling calling clients calling uh property owners and that's how we started doing transactions ourselves and then after 6 months it got pivoted into a non online platform the idea was never to create an online platform the idea was just to make money for ourselves and uh, <laughs> so yeah that's how it started and then we just, again we like we had a very good cto who's my co-founder we built an online platform out of it so we went live in like april of 21 and that's that's when the journey started it's almost been two it's been two years already mm-hmm. yeah so <clears throat> now i totally get what you mean when you say real estate in india is it's it's a very traditional industry like right? like for for myself when i moved back i did go into real estate initially okay. uh working on some stuff in kandala and that's when i realized that like you know as as a 20 that time was 22 years old so as a 22 year old for me to get into this i need someone with 30 years of experience in the industry to be by my side that right? it's impossible for me to figure out what to do at the collector's office what to do at this office that office the the search the a uh, survey of the land all of those things like it's it's a lot and so tell me this now all of this that you've figured out right you were always propelled towards real estate because your family's in the business so did you know that that's the direction you want to head into right after right, right out of college uh so i mean <clears throat> all of us prepared ourselves for masters or a job always <laughs> because we're engineers but uh, i mean just i would say we're like all almost accidental entrepreneurs because uh, my co-founder got into mit in us my other co-founder also got into like a very good college i got a good job like etc and we just thought you know we'll go our ways continue but then the accident that happened was covid so covid made us realize ki, you know there's no need spending money on uh, education abroad we just thought let's just come back do something ourselves and uh, and then we were just figuring out what to do so we all like we had startups before this and we like you know kuch saath mein karna so i mean we just tried to see whose strength is what and then just came up with real estate because my family is in that plus it is a sector which is untapped in terms of uh, i mean there is no online organized platform or player in the investment space of real estate so we thought you know why not capture the space and it's it's i think today real estate is india's largest asset class but it's highly underserved uh, there is so much local play happening there are local brokers there are local developers local investors the micro markets are very local there is no online uh, organized platform so i mean that's a little bit of a background how we got into real estate because just realized that that is our strength and that is something which we feel there is a gap so i'm going to pick on one very specific thing you said yeah. um which is and the reason i do this is because our our previous um one of our previous guests kind of said something very similar which is what you said was um we didn't want to waste more money on education abroad and thought we'd come back and start something what was the reason right like why do you um believe or feel that doing further education abroad would have not been as fruitful as starting your own thing uh so i i don't i mean i'm not against education abroad like i have yeah. my sisters etc all of them study abroad but it's just that 
for me personally i felt that the learning curve is much better when you do it yourself uh and that's what like even in college obviously as engineers you rarely study so you just spend a lot of time doing practical things building things uh yourself uh so i mean uh yeah i mean i just for me it personally works uh that you know i would rather do a work and learn on like on the job rather than just go abroad and uh you know post that like it's it's an entire journey it's like a ripple effect you do finish your engineering then you do masters masters ke baad you do a job i didn't want to do the standard <laughs> like you know uh role so just thought i'll start after graduation i mean why waste time so yeah fair enough and i think like you mentioned the traditional route is um uh, getting a job and i think you worked at like maybe two places before you started something you were at like reflex realty right like for one year before you so were, reflex like, oh. reflex is my own company like my family business oh okay so oh, so okay okay yeah i never really worked i never actually got the opportunity to work for someone uh so that is bad and good both because uh bad it sometimes can spoil you also uh, like in terms of discipline but uh, good it also teaches you like a lot of things like you know how to be accountable how to take risk i think that's the most important thing an entrepreneur should learn is just be accountable uh, for everything so yeah i mean i yeah reflex is like just coming to your question this my own family business so yeah i didn't really work anywhere else Okay so then like so yeah right after graduation then you started working in the real estate uh, industry and then um eventually started something of your own in your process so one thing that you'll do at prop returns is that you'll hand pick your properties that you put on the platform so can you take us like through the process of put the, like hand picking these properties and then yeah. um what what do you look for in a property that you put on your platform correct so uh today we mainly cater towards commercial real estate which is like offices shops yeah. banks warehouses schools data centers everything so every kind of asset class so basically our entire niches uh, uh when i say niche as in our focus i would say it's not a niche market it's a massive market uh is rent yielding commercial property so anything you can invest you can start earning rental income or passive income from day one uh so uh what we do is we focus on pre-leased assets which is also an asset class under real estate uh which are properties which are already rented out from day one so uh if amazon is sitting in a property as on rent and x is the owner i facilitate the process from x to y y is the new buyer but the tenant remains the same which is amazon right so you start earning rental from amazon tomorrow uh the new investor or the incoming purchaser so what we do is we focus on that asset class uh, in that perspective where the largest in bombay and delhi today we have like over 700 assets or 600 assets uh, across bombay delhi mainly uh, and we work with 16000 investors to invest in this asset class uh, today so that's our focus like that's i would say our niche uh, so how we hand pick these assets is we look at a lot of metrics uh, so more than just quality of the asset we look at a lot of quantitative data like uh, what is the last rental in that prop, uh, in that micro market uh, how old is the building uh, what is the return on investment um, you know what am i like a lot of things like if you on the platform we have each and every detail like financial data for each and every asset so we made it like completely open which is like very rare in real estate you will not see platforms which are completely transparent or open with like the at least on the b2c side uh you know so so i mean we curate each and every listing which we put we look at a lot of metrics from financial to qualitative to is it investment worthy we give our own uh, rating our own suggestion we have a team of relationship managers who take care of the clients end to end so i mean just uh, we are focusing on this asset today but the goal is to be the largest online commercial real estate broking platform in india there is no online commercial real estate broking platform uh, I, and there are listing platforms but there's no broking platform so yeah yeah fair fair enough and i think you mentioned a lot about like data right like that's the way so do you know like why do you think i guess that it's so um 
not open and not transparent when it comes to data and like that's the barrier that you're trying to break like i get like india's real estate market it is it is quite traditional and it is quite closed off so a like why do you think that is and b like how are you breaking those barriers are you like are there a lot of challenges that come up with breaking these barriers oh uh, yeah i mean initially there are always challenges like when you try to uh, like you know um, when you try to change something in an industry which is there since like what more than 100 years things have been tradition there's not been much innovation in real estate right uh, it there is always some like obstacle there like the people there are always some naysayers right like people in the industry today uh, feel that you know why are you disrupting an industry which is already played out since like so many years which is built only on trust or gut right but that's not ideal today like is the world of data right there's so much innovation happening in every industry based on data artificial intelligence etc but real estate is something which has always been very primitive so i mean there are always some naysayers but i think initial it's only initial days like when you're trying to sort of uh, you know change people's perception uh, but once you sort of get up get like till that point after that it's just people who support you I mean, people have always been supportive of what we're doing in the ecosystem, at least today. Like, not when we started. I think first one year is always going to be tough. Uh, there will be always people who will challenge you and say that, you know, uh, who are you? Who's coming as a twenty-three-year-old, like three kids, building a real estate company where real estate is an industry mm-hmm. ruled by veterans? So it's always going to be like that. But okay, I mean, now there's uh, people support us, and we're fortunate to be, you know, supported by everyone. So, uh, going deeper into the fact of these three twenty-three-year-old kids, um, how does it? How does it work? To, I mean, how do you? What is the dynamic when you have three co-founders? Right, like, what kind of clashes do you all have? And you know, what's the? Um, is it difficult being three co-founders? And especially given that you said you all were all like best friends, like how yeah. does that work as well? Oh, uh, I mean, it works. It really works in like. Our favor because the the idea is to have like three people who have different strengths. Um, so all of us have like different strengths, like and and that's the best part about having three co-founders. Like uh, if you're just one uh, founder, you need to have everyone's strengths in you, which is really difficult. Like and I respect people who build like startups with just one or two co-founders. Uh, so I mean, for us, it's split up very well. Like I have my co-founder. So I handle the operations side of things. My co-founder handles the, uh, like mainly the marketing, uh, and my third co-founder takes care of tech. So these are the three uh, verticals in any business, right? Operations, tech, and marketing. So that's why we were fortunate to have three co-founders. And I mean, there is, I mean, because we know each other so well, uh, uh, the most like there is brutal honesty, and that is like the number one thing required in co-founders. Like if you're not brutally honest. It's just impossible to scale something together. So yeah, I mean, that's how it works because we're so go- close to each other. We're honest all the time about what we feel is going wrong and what can be better. And when it comes to like, so you're doing the operation side of it, right? Um, how do you kind of? Because I'm sure, like sometimes um, the marketing team might say that okay, you know, this is something we need to focus more on. The tech team says this is something we need to focus more on. I feel like marketing is still something you can figure out um, relatively easily. But how do you plus the marketing co-founder relay your requirements to tech? And is there a lot of backlash from tech sometimes? Oh, uh, I mean, uh, in every startup, it's very important to have like a balance between all like departments. So, like in our company, like we've created a culture where there is no depart, like there's no department because पहले तो it's a startup. डिपार्टमेंट जैसी चीज यूजली होती नहीं है बट लाइक वी ट्राई टू यू नो मेक श्योर दैट एवरी वन इज इन्वॉल्व इन एवरी थिंग वी जस्ट हैव क्लियर डिविजन वेन इट कम्स टू हूज टेकिंग केयर ऑफ वर्ट बट एट द सेम टाइम लाइक यूजली क्लैशेज डोंट कम वेन एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन फंक्शन एज डिपार्टमेंट क्लैशेज कम इन आर कंपनी रेयरली कम बिकॉज एवरी वन इज इन्वॉल्व इन एवरी थिंग लाइक वी एंड ऑब्वियसली थ्री ऑफ अस we have discussions as co-founders we have our founder discussion every day so we try to make sure everything's going smooth in each and every 
uh, department in like a startup. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting to see how you're like doing this in like this traditional industry. And again, like being not, I, I guess like you said that you've had like background and your family businesses and real estate. So that definitely is helpful to have that kind of knowledge. But just like overall, it seems quite like a like high like it has like high barriers essentially to like enter that but a th- another thing is that like you mentioned that all three of y'all were like engineers and now y'all were like accidental entrepreneurs so how is that like transition going from like science and engineering to like then business and entrepreneurship uh i mean so that's the best thing about like engineering because it teaches you like a lot of things except engineering so yeah i mean everything except engineering uh, uh so i mean uh, we just got like we got a lot of time to experiment on things i think that's what engineering teaches you two things like one i think it teaches you discipline uh which is like damn important in running a startup uh yeah. so like all three of us uh, before coming to bits we obviously went through the iit journey right we study for iit 12 hours 13 hours a day we all study for iit uh um, and then you give the iit entrance then you give a bit sat entrance and there are multiple entrance exams so um, i mean that teaches you discipline so we're all like very fortunate to have that discipline but at the same time engineering also teaches you to like it gives you free time uh, um i mean i know people say engineering like study bahut zyada hota hai it's yeah. not it's it gives you a lot of free time because uh and we got fortunately a lot of free time to experiment on things so the entire start like four years of our college like my co-founder started their first venture in their first year i joined up in the second or third year uh of engineering so like we all experimented on something like i've during my engineering i've learned everything except engineering i've learned finance i've learned uh investment banking i've learned real estate i've learned 3d uh like autocad designing 3d printing i've learned everything except engineering so i mean it just gives you a lot of free time i i would not say free time uh, just time which you can use to uh, learn new things um, and it just builds curiosity like i think engineering ka it just builds curiosity because you know as a civil engineer you're not going to get like a fantastic job so <laughs> you just start doing everything else I I think you're like one of the first people that I've ever met that said that engineering gave you like free time. I feel like generally it's always like the opposite I hear. Yeah. But I think it is also I agree with like everything that you've said that like there's a lot to engineering than just engineering. Like yeah. there's a lot of skills and things like that like a lot of solving that you learn that can be then uh used and transferred to like business and starting something of your own. Um So would you like would you say that if you had to go back knowing that you are going to be an entrepreneur would you still do engineering or would you think of choosing like a business degree Uh I would still do engineering I mean obviously engineering uh, subtracting all the IIT study I did I would not want <laughs> to do that but engineering in general I would do that because when I say free time I I don't really mean that like you know the entire day is free Yes, you yeah, do yeah. a lot of. Uh, but the best part about engineering is that whenever you are working on something, uh, right? There's a lot of, like you mentioned, a lot of problem solving, a lot of practical approach to things. So that just teaches you in general a practical approach to everything. It also depends on like the <laughs> type of people you surround with uh, in engineering, where you go, which college, etc. That all matters a lot. Like you will see two people graduating from the same engineering institute, like from different engineering institutes, have completely different backgrounds. Like. Uh, it also depends like if you go to usually a a bits gives you a lot of like time to focus on problem solving and their curriculum is focused like heavily on uh, uh internships and like practical stuff so i mean yeah that's quite cool yeah i feel like that was the right choice for you then because like even my father said that he's a he's an engineer turned businessman as well and he said that i've asked him the same question would you go back and do like another course if you could and he said that <clears throat> the engineer's mindset which you get when you go through the entire like education process is something that's applicable to any any job you might do in the world right it's just they don't and as you said they don't actually teach you engineering they teach you a way to solve problems and a way to think in a in a particular track and 
that's what's the most so in fact he was telling me to do engineering as well and i was going to like i was i would have i sh- now that i think of it i i would go back and change my um like my degree to engineering i did a unfortunately i did only a management degree <laughs> nice but um so coming back to prop returns itself right um i think like as as i said there's uh, as we discussed there's a lot of traditional uh, traditionality or traditionalism in uh real estate in india and like there's also the fact that many times when you buy a property there's a there's an account transfer component and a cash component then there's also the fact that you do due diligence you have to go see the site yourself like people prefer that very in person kind of dealing how has like how have you been able to transfer that to the tech uh, side of things okay so uh, it is a very traditional industry uh, there are a lot of things um, i mean in general like the due diligence process of real estate is like very very time consuming it's very traditional like you have to put a paper notice like you will see economic times the times of india mein 14 days 7 days ka paper notice aata hai ki you know this person is purchasing this property then uh, there's a lot of like physical also aspect like high so our model is hybrid right we have an offline and online component offline also there's lot right you i mean the process is very uh, time consuming you go to right you like it uh, then after that if you like it you do the transaction then you sign an mou which is again offline right with or a term sheet you can say uh, once you do a term sheet you have like a lot of around 15 to 20 days diligence title search report a like, lot of things i mean a sale agreement pass kitne owners the traditional chain of documents like a lot of time uh, which goes there and after that uh, bank ka process if you're taking a loan for the property that again is like another 50 documents so uh and uh, yeah i mean then legal one well, sorry then preparing the sale agreement that's also another 20 30 page document so there's a lot of like just to basically point it out uh, there's a lot of offline angle to it but at the same time how we made it easier is uh the discovery part so 90% of your decision like the 90% of your decision is based on discovery so pehle finding the right asset right that takes most of your time because when investors get out in the market looking for assets it takes them like typically 30 days to find something uh 30 45 days to find the right fit minimum it can go till 6 months also uh what we've done on our platform is we have cut than 30 45 days to like 30 seconds in a way because uh today i'm an investor i want to invest i will the, the traditional way of doing things is i call up local brokers right channel partners i call up developers i call my friends visit properties continuously in rounds multiple rounds have a look at like 20 20 properties after i shortlist my final one with us we have everything on one platform so we have all the assets and one it's like a one stop shop so we are one person who you can speak to for every investment property so i mean we short typically on the platform investors go they filter what they're looking for exactly they put in their requirement ki i want a property in low prel for example which gives me this much return which is of this much square feet and they'll find like five seven properties which they can visit the at short list so it's it basically cuts down a lot of time uh, and like high net worth individuals who invest in real estate one thing they don't have is time they have everything but they don't have time uh, so that's why we've tried to make it like super simple super transparent yeah. uh the entire process and that's like obviously you can't change the offline part you can't say kal diligence you won't do due diligence uh, because that is something which you need to if someone is investing 5 10 crores in a property that is something you can't change but what you can change is the discovery part which we make it like in 30 45 seconds you can find what you're looking for on the black but you know the fact that there's so much to be done so i've i've gone through the process right like i've gone through the entire process of buying um pure like flat land and so uh, the entire mojni as they call it the search and then the mou you cancel the mou you read on the mou you put out three uh, paper advertisements because there was some shift in timeline and all of that as a first time like investor so as to say i obviously had um an uncle of mine who's a real estate like he's been in the industry since like the age of 20 and 
So he was there to like talk me through the process. He took me to the collector's office, to the district office and all of that. But I'm like, for first time invest investors on your platform, like when they, let's say they've come, they found something that they like, and now they have, they have to go through that process. I all like with them throughout the entire process, like saying that, okay, you know, this needs to be done. This needs to be done. Like once they've discovered, you also help them close the entire deal. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. So we are, uh, in, in perspective, we are an online, you can say brokerage house. Um, right. So we basically facilitate not only the discovery, but the discovery is pure tech, right? It's online. But once the discovery is over, once they shortlist a couple of assets on the platform, we actually have a team of relationship managers uh, who are each designated, like you can say a couple of hundred to thousand clients each. Uh, uh, they handled the entire journey of the transaction from the time you shortlist an asset to showing it to you to making sure that the diligence process is smooth. Uh, we have our own lawyers who can basically guide you. Uh, we, so we provide legal services. We have our tie-ups with banks. So we do loans also for you. Uh, everything. I mean, <clears throat> as an investor, if you're first time, uh, we guide you from everything. Like because as first time, it can be very overwhelming. Uh, there's a lot of lot of steps to be taken care of to at least secure yourself. Like that's the most important in real estate investment, right? How do if I'm investing five crores, ten crores, how do I secure myself first? Uh, because that's hard on money. So we make sure that that's taken care of. We make sure that the investor is getting the absolute value for the transaction. It should not happen that what happens in real estate is today, uh, a lot of people will manipulate you to yeah. pay, overpay, right? Uh, by like today's industry, real estate industry has become a lot of about marketing, right? Like you market the product right and you'll get a good price, but that's not how it should be. You should actually invest in the asset based on uh, the value of the property, the true value of that building. If you're buying something in car, for example, you would need to look at what value have transactions already happened in car in the last five years. So we provide all that data to investors so that they can make a data back decision and not just, you know, I'm selling something nicely. It should not be bought. That's not how things should work at least in at least the way we do. So, I mean, we handle them from, everything from discovery to finding the right market value to making a right offer for the property to doing the due diligence to getting a loan for the property and post sales also making sure the agreement with the company the tenant uh, in place is signed you're getting tenants every uh, rental every month which bank account transfer property tax transfer a lot of processes like there's so much that goes into the it's i think the most complicated industry if you look at it uh, in terms of the process in india hundred uh, percent it seems like really complicated and I think kudos to you and your team for like taking that up and that as a challenge to kind of um, solve this and try to make it I guess easier because a lot of people if they're not from um, a certain background or are in a particular industry it would be very overwhelming to just even think like even if you have the money to just break the barriers and come in and try to be an investor would be difficult so um, this helps and helps it make it easier and gives access to a lot more people to do and invest in certain things like this. But uh, speaking about it being challenging, we have another challenge for you. It's called Two Lies and One Truth. Um, the idea is that you give us three statements from your entire journey so far. It can be a challenge or an accomplishment uh with proper tones uh, one of them should be true and the other two should be false statements and then anuj and i have to guess which one was true okay we were so um let's just put it this way okay randomly so we were a team of three when we started proper returns that is number one. Second, uh i used to uh, deliver groceries and food items before i started proper returns and uh, third, I had an office space when I started prop returns. Okay. The other three. Honestly, the second one, because it's like different from the others. But others, what do you think? 
I'm trying to think. Um, they were three, but I don't know whether there were more than three when they started. Because there were three co-founders. That's the thing. Yeah, three co-founders. Could have been more, like, um, started with a team. Could have been... I don't know if they would have gone into office space that quickly. So the third one, so I doubt, is the truth. Even I'm... Okay, fine. Even I'll choose the second one. Grocery? Okay. You used to deliver. Yeah, I mean, the second <laughs> one is true. Yeah, I mean, all three of us actually used to oh, okay. uh, deliver groceries and... Uh, so in like the first one coming to the first one not three people we were actually four uh, so when we were running transactions ourselves obviously i have two co-founders with me but i have a founding member uh, who joined us as an intern when three of us were running just transactions like normal offline time so basically that journey he's seen that journey from uh, uh, from us doing transactions to us becoming a platform today so he's been with us since like he's still a part of the company obviously but it's been like almost two years and he's been there since like uh like as a founding member with us since like day one so yeah i mean we were four people technically when we started uh based in bombay only so again he's based in bombay would have been uh, a great he's actually from gd he's from gd somani so <laughs> i don't know like i think that that's how but yeah I mean, uh, just had a good journey. But yeah, the second one was like the truth because uh, just before starting Proper Turns, like uh, our first venture together, like the three of us, uh, I would not say a venture, but we actually uh, in Dubai in our second or third year of engineering, uh, what we realized is, um, and we, like obviously we wanted to make some money because um, Dubai is obviously expensive and second is we were obviously looking for easy ways to make money. So what we did is, uh, in every engineering college, people are really lazy when they order food, when they order groceries, etc. Uh, and uh, every engineering campus is really big. So from the main gate to the room, it is like a good walk, you know, uh, from the main gate of the okay. campus to the room. And the food usually comes only till the main gate. It can't come to your room. So what we started is, uh, we we basically started taking orders from people in our campus. Uh, uh, whoever want, like the food used to come to the gate to get it from the gate to the room. Like uh, we used to charge 20 bucks, 20 rupees, so one dirham. Uh, so, so, so that was one thing. Then sort of it increased to, uh, we started doing grocery delivery. So there was a gro- grocery store, which was like a 10 minute walk. And Dubai is like really hot. It's mm-hmm. like 45, 50 degrees. 45 degrees in summer so this was summer time so no everyone's lazy like everyone wants to be in ac etc so what we did is uh we started charging people to buy groceries from that place so like 10 10 minute walks so 20 minutes two ways uh we used to charge them like five dirham six dirhams which is like 100 bucks and people used to pay that so basically we started making money uh we did actually very well uh, unexpectedly <laughs> uh i mean this was we started as just to make money and we found like a problem which is like no one solving, especially for our community, like for yeah. college, because we have like two thousand students, right? Now in two thousand students, everyone orders food, everyone orders grocery, everyone's too lazy. It's hot. I myself don't like going outside. So we just found a gap there, and we started making money. We made like a good amount of money, which we spent obviously uh, entirely there, no savings. But then that sort of became a startup. So uh, after we realized that, you know. Uh, we were doing all this we realized there's a need for it and uh, need for anytime anything and anywhere delivery so that's how uh, what we did is step one we created a whatsapp uh, where people can just order on whatsapp and we go like i used to leave classes finish the delivery <laughs> and come back to class so that's how so i mean yeah i mean we used to do deliveries and then this became a startup and then it became a startup called brisco uh, which basically is like zepto of dubai so, like, anytime, anywhere, anything, delivery. So, really yeah, I mean, <laughs> we used to do deliveries before. But, yeah, it was, we made, like, good <laughs> amount of money. We used to do, like, around 35 to 40 deliveries a day. Just two oh, of wow. us. Oh, wow. So, it's not bad at all. Three of us, actually. Not bad. Yeah. Then we hired, we hired, oh, like, wow. one, one person to do. <laughs> yeah, we'll make it after hire. But, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. No, I think like y'all have a very entrepreneurial like mindset as well, right? Like to think of something like that, like while you're at college. And I think that always seems to be like 
the way you want it to go. Or at least it feels like it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I think it's a very interesting point that, you know, it just shows how entrepreneurial all of y'all were even before you all actually jumped into it. Um, but speaking of like, you know, the kind of things that come out of, um, like th- that's the kind of stuff we like getting out of these games is just interesting, like, you know, small points that uh, wouldn't come out in just a conversation. And our next game is even more um, catered towards stuff like that. So it's, it's called Red Flags. And what we're, we're going to give you three situations. Okay. And in each of the situations, there will be two green flags and one red flag. We've adapted these situations for um, prop returns. And you have to choose which one you'd rather be in. So situation one is there are 100,000 investors using prop returns. You are raising your next round of funding and it's going well. But there was an earthquake on a property where the deal was closed on prop returns. Situation two is you're having more than 1,000 crores worth of transactions on the platform. Prop Returns has added eight more investment categories to the platform, but the last two-year average rate of return on properties listed on Prop Returns has been only 2%. Situation three is you now have more than 15,000 investment options listed. You've successfully started an academy for real estate education but the user acquisition has plateaued at 15,000 investors because people want the traditional process uh, of buying, like, of discovering and buying land. I mean, uh, I feel I would be in three uh, purely because at least that's what I feel. Uh, the second point really, like, so our entire goal as entrepreneurs has always been like, we wanted to create impact and we wanted to uh, learn in the journey so for us we always want and the second point says that prop returns has successfully started an academy for real estate education so we focus actually a lot on like education and impact because we want that first time investors should be savvy and they would ideally not need our help uh, if uh, online ways of teaching them or videos or reels if you go to our instagram you'll find like a lot of educational reels Uh, a lot of educational content blogs we have an entire dedicated section to blogs and tools so i mean (laughs) i I would be part of situation three because at least that shows that we've created an impact not only started an academy but at least educated multiple investors on how to make their investment or their first investment journey uh the third point i mean uh because i have to choose situation three i need to be fine with it but i mean for us it's also not about the quantity of investors. We've always believed that having less investors, it's fine, but adding value to them is more important. So uh, like today, every investor's journey should be smooth, even if we have to compromise on the number of investors on the platform. So I mean, situation three is ideal because at least we are learning. That is number one and we're creating an impact. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, 100%. I think... um... It's, I love the fact that, so we in fact added that point because we wanted to gauge like, you know, how much is, uh, how much of an impact do you put on educating people? So the point of this game is to also like, you know, it's, it's a trade off, right? So where does, yeah which trade off is the best for you? And I think I love the fact that you've, cho- you, you know, you've chosen situation three saying that it's about the quality of investments and um, creating that impact. And I think that's a very interesting insight yeah Yeah. i agree and i also think that uh in terms of also uh you mentioned that like few investors are fine right because like if you get um multiple investments from those few investors that's also good enough uh and like then that trade-off doesn't agree like it doesn't matter whether it's one investment from fifteen thousand people or like two from 7,500 like it's still the same so yeah that's pretty interesting as well correct but yeah um, I mean just to just to add a little bit like uh what we also I mean all of us all three of us believe is that I mean we need to have people who love our product we can't have like 10,000 people who just like it uh we need have like at least a good foundation of 100 200 people who love our product because obviously, like in the real estate industry, word of mouth really matters. Yeah. yeah. So, exactly. So, I mean, 
uh, and plus our average transaction size is between 5 to 15 crores so having a lower volume is fine because uh, we have to we make obviously more money each transaction and we add more value uh, if we focus on fewer investors yeah no that's interesting um and i think that like adding um the adding value part right like you then have that because the entire process is so long you have that touch point with everyone and i think again like yours is a good hybrid in between just completely offline versus online and offline so i think you'll get the advantage of the discovery part being online and that taking less time which helps with like if for example this was a completely offline this thing they would probably be able to take even fewer clients on but given that you all have that advantage, you're taking like the best of both worlds, essentially. But our next um, segment is the rapid fire. So self-explanatory, we, uh, I'll give you a couple of questions and then you have quick answers. Uh, uh, so the first one, how many all-nighters did you pull in your first year of prop returns? Uh, I think... I can't count. I mean, it's it's impossible. Like maybe I don't know. Can't count. <laughs> uh, okay. What is the scrappiest thing that you've done to build your business? Uh, telecalling. I think just cold calling continuously. That's the only way to build any business. Fair enough. Um, did you ever question whether it was worth it? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, in the early days, yes, because I did not find that my time was being used to. Uh, at least good purpose, but yeah. Sorry, it's rapid fire, but just explain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, fair enough. Uh, one word to describe your emotion when you first found your first property. Uh, happiness. Okay. Um, emotion when you first fired someone. Um, uh, just sad. I mean, yeah. Uh, weirdest place uh, from where you have walked. Uh, my. Co-founder's uh, bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just... Okay. Uh, what was an oh shit moment that you've had? Uh, people are buying uh, real estate online. Okay. Uh, your biggest fear? Uh, of not creating impact. Would you ever retire? Uh, no. <laughs> it won't be. It won't make okay. me happy. Which hobby of yours did your work kill? Uh, reading to a certain extent. Uh, books or podcasts? Books. iPad or a notebook? Notebook. Uh, are you a morning person or a night owl? Uh, both. <laughs> when the need arises. <laughs> Fair enough. And uh, your favorite social media platform? LinkedIn. <laughs> as a true entrepreneur but uh that concludes the rapid fire segment bringing us to the end of our conversation but before we let you go we ask every guest to ask our next guest a question so we'll first ask you your question and then you can ask our next guest one so your question is if anuj and janvi were to ask you one question that would give their audience the max amount of value based on all your life experiences um, so far and everything you've learned in your journey so far, what is the one question they should be asking you to get the most value out of you? Uh, I think, I mean, you pretty much asked everything. So, I mean, at least uh, <laughs> that covers it. But just the importance of failure, I think that is not something which a lot of people uh, value. I mean, so... Um, yeah, I mean, if you ask me importance of failure, I can speak hours about it. But I mean, yeah, that is something if you ask any entrepreneur, not only me, you learn a lot about, uh, you know, what it takes to build a business, if that makes sense. No, 100% agreed. And so then let, let us ask you this. If, what what was one failure that was important for prop returns to be what it is today? Um, so there were... I would not say one failure. There were multiple failures. I mean, in every startup, there are multiple failures. Like every day you just feel as an entrepreneur that, you know, one, one day will be really good. And then some days will be really, really bad uh, where you lose complete motivation. So, I mean, failures uh, keep on. There were multiple points of time where for six months, uh, we did, or I would not say six months, but for four months, we had no revenue. Uh, 
uh, in between. Like this was not even in the early days. This was once we scaled as a company. There were like three months in between where we did not revenue, uh, but the next three months were like banger. So uh, three months when we did not revenue, we were literally like uh, surviving on the last piece of cash in the bank. Uh, <laughs> I mean, for six months, uh, I would say like we called our team to my co-founder's house because we didn't have money to pay rent, uh, etc. So I mean, just uh, simple things like this uh, keep on coming, keep on like you just have to keep going. Like uh, three months, six months, things might not turn out in your favor, but you know when it does, um, all your compound effect shows up in the end. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's pretty much it. I think that's again part of like, you know, you have to be scrappy when it's needed to continue just pushing through and figuring out how to get to the next phase of your business. Correct. Yeah, agreed. And I think in right now you can say like in retrospect it's simple, but like at that point in time, like I don't think there was a simple um, problem to have. Like it's quite stressful. It is. It is. But it it that's the fun in being an entrepreneur. I feel. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. But yeah, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure to learn more about thank your you. journey and how you built proper returns. I think that you've had like a lot of ups and downs, and it's been uh interesting to see this from this point of view. But like also to see where it goes and how you build in yeah. the future. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, guys, for having me. It was an absolute pleasure, and yeah, thank you so much for being on.